Apostle Lewis here with you with another installment of Voice for Restoration broadcast. Now, I wanted to uh, take a brief moment today. You know, we've talked about things like restoration. We've talked about things like um, reformation. And it's great to talk in such general terms, but I want to start um, talking about some of the things that I believe and that I'm hearing from the Lord that needs to be restored in the church. You know, there's um, there's nothing more powerful than knowing that God loves you and the love of God. But I think that message needs to um, be accompanied with the fear of the Lord. And because I, it's only going to be by the fear of the Lord that you don't completely um, go off the rails. Like you could sit there and know that God loves you. And all those things, but if um, if you don't have the fear of the Lord, you can take the love of God to mean it doesn't matter what you do. And I, I just want you to read. I want to read with you a couple of scriptures. Just one, real quick. Um, um, Psalm thirty-six. It's just a real interesting one. Um, it says, "An oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked." There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes. When he finds out his iniquity and when he hates, the words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and do good and deceives uh, and devises wickedness on his bed and sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. You know, you can have a place where you love and you go, I love people and but you don't hate evil. And, and one of the signs of the lack of the fear of the Lord is when you don't abhor evil. Um, and the reason the fear of the Lord is important is because it's the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so wisdom is not here. Wisdom starts in here in our hearts with the fear of the Lord. And I want to read you um, uh, another scripture. I'm going to pull it out of the Amplified. Uh, turn to it, Hebrews uh, chapter uh, 1, verse 9. I'm going to pull it up here on my, uh, my computer so I can just have it right in front of me. Um, it's, I want you to hear this. This is describing Jesus. And I, I want you to see uh, his heart for the Lord. I think there needs to be a restoration of this truth because I think that there was a season that we came out of where God was ready to judge us. And that was the kind of message all the time. And it wasn't accurate. And and the love message came out. But at the same time, there, there, there needs to be a balance in that. Or not even a balance. It just it needs to be a part of the true message of the kingdom. And this is the heart of Jesus. You have loved righteousness. You have delighted in integrity, virtue, uprightness in purpose, thought, and action. And you have hated lawlessness, injustice, and iniquity. Therefore, God, even your God, has anointed you with the oil of exultant joy and gladness and above and beyond your companions. I, I want you to see that it wasn't just that Jesus loved right. He actually hated injustice and iniquity, evil, at the same time. And I, I think it's important for us to regain that truth in um, loving God and um, in, in having the fear of the Lord that when, I'm, when I first, number one, I'm not to love my enemies. I'm to love him first. And out of that, love myself so I can love my neighbor as myself. And then out of that, the love for my enemies. But but that doesn't mean that we love iniquity and that we we sit there and look and go, you know, I'm not going to judge what they're doing. Well, number one, here's the thing. When it comes to stuff like sexual sin and perversion, I, I want you to know you don't have to judge it. His word already has. And it's not a matter of us judging it and going around. I, I, don't, I don't believe in going up to people and going sinners or going to hell. I, I don't believe that. But are you training um, the body? Are you teaching the body that God doesn't judge that because he already has. Okay. Or are you teaching that um, uh, God loves them anyways? And so that doesn't matter. 
And so I think there needs to be a restoration of the truth of the fear of the Lord. Paul, Paul says we're each going to receive a reward according to the, what we, the deeds in the flesh. And I, that, that is kind of frightening when you think about it, right? Like, you know, that should strike the fear of the Lord in us. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the importance for you and me to have the fear of the Lord again in our lives where we are thinking about these things and we are, we are um, you know, meditating on, you know, one of the things I do pray for me, I prayed that Hebrew scripture, but I also pray, Lord, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Keep me from evil. And, you know, I want your wisdom. I, I want the fear of the Lord because the fear of the Lord is kind of like the, the spirit that will protect you um, uh, as you seek out the things of God. And you're to be wrapped up in God's love, rooted and grounded in it. Not in his judgment and not in his wrath, but in his love. But love does not mean we get to do whatever we want. So I want you to think about that. I hope you will. And um, I hope that will bless you. Amen. So God bless you. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.